Courtney Lutz said she had to be strategic about what she wore to class. Sweatpants, hoodies. What did you hope wearing all this would do? Draw less attention. Lutz is a graduate of Crandall University. Crandall University is Eastern Canada's leading Christian liberal arts university. She's also among the current and former students whose stories fueled an anonymous Instagram account. So I was Jessica in the Instagram. Mostly calling out the behavior of one professor. In Lutz's case, she says he constantly commented on how she looked. I just felt super uncomfortable. I was anxiety driven. He commented on the clothing that I was wearing and asked if I dressed up for him. I never wanted to attend these classes because I was scared to get called out. Crandall professors stated that I would not pass the class. That professor's behavior was so off-putting. I wanted to like, keep track of when these things were happening. Indira Trousdale started documenting it alongside her class notes. Why do you have to describe like how I look fetching or something like that? I don't really want my older male professor imagining me in different outfits. It's a little uncomfortable. That professor. How are you today, Dr. Stackhouse? Very well, Seth. Nice to visit with you. Celebrated Christian theologian John Stackhouse, Jr. Evangelicals are people who believe that God's given us something important to do. This theology professor A regular says, CBC pundit. From a new pope. There might be actually hope for those who want to see the church change. I'm very happy. To the Dalai Lama's visit uh, to Canada. He's the serious spiritual guy who's not a Christian. I wrote a book about 10 years ago. And an author of numerous books, including one on feminism in Christianity. But on Wednesday night, after a six-month investigation prompted by those social media posts, Crandall University issued a blistering report that revealed another side of the professor. The report itself doesn't name Stackhouse, but CBC News has identified him as the faculty member, one whose classroom jokes or stories constituted sexual harassment, whose behavior bordered on abuse of authority, and whose antics detrimentally affected the learning environment. The investigator, after viewing more than 100 pages of inappropriate emails sent by the professor to a student, concluded it was a classic case of grooming. Crandall terminated Stackhouse within a week of receiving the final report. It turns out it wasn't the first time he'd faced such allegations. Not a single female that I've spoken to about that has been, has been surprised. From 1998 to 2015, Stackhouse taught here in Vancouver. All of us knew that if there was... Abigail Harmon knew Stackhouse at Regent, first as a student, then as a work colleague. His interactions with women were sometimes a little bit too loose um, and overly familiar and more personal. Um, sometimes it would feel... Um, like it would cross a line into an understanding that he was maybe interested in you or attracted to you or um, that he wanted something from you. When you hear he's under investigation for some of the same issues at another university, what, what goes through your mind when you hear that? I was not at all surprised. Um, I would assume that someone who was not held accountable for his actions was going to simply continue the same misconduct at a different institution. In the Crandall report, the investigator asked the professor if there had ever been a sexual harassment complaint made against him at his previous institution. His reply, according to the report, I do not see how it's in my interest to answer that question. Multiple sources told us Regent College investigated Stackhouse's conduct with female students and staff back in 2014. We also reviewed documents from that time which reveal a similar pattern of alleged behavior and at least one instance of unwanted touching that ultimately led to his departure. CBC News has also learned there was a settlement agreement between Stackhouse and Regent, the terms of which were to be kept secret by both parties through a non-disclosure agreement. And so when it hired Stackhouse, it appears Crandall didn't know about his past. If that was apparent before, why did it continue to Crandall? It's just continuous and these patterns, like they're, they're, it hasn't changed. We call it past the garbage, one individual moving from one organization to another because there's no trail. 
Liz LeClaire is with Can't Buy My Silence, an international movement dedicated to ending the misuse of non-disclosure agreements, or NDAs, especially when it comes to silencing victims. If nothing is reported publicly, if there is nothing allowed to be online, if there is no trail of information, it's really difficult for people to figure out if someone's a problematic inf- individual. CBC News repeatedly asked Regent College for an interview to address many questions, including whether it disclosed Stackhouse's past to his new potential employer. In a public statement, Regent College said it was disturbed and saddened by allegations against Professor John Stackhouse, but that it couldn't discuss past employees because of privacy laws. Regent public statement is honestly pathetic. There's nothing good or noble or true about it. Um, It doesn't take responsibility. As an alumnus of Regent, I'm frankly embarrassed. Michael Buttery is currently a PhD student in ethics at the University of Toronto. He thinks his alma mater needs to step up. Regent's decision-making falls far below the standards we should expect of any institution, but especially a Christian one. Across the country, another Christian school, a very different approach. I would like to just quote a scripture passage to you, really. It says in um, Micah chapter 8, And what does the Lord require of you? To to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And I think it's important that we are open and honest about everything that we do. Sheila Cummings is Crandall's former board chair. She helped oversee the investigation. Would it have been easier to just try to sweep this under the carpet? Perhaps, but it was not what was right and honest. As for John Stackhouse, so far he's not responded to our many requests for an interview or comment on these matters.